Good morning, everyone. Thank you again for, for coming. Um, my wife, Kathy, and I are very happy to have a chance to talk to you about our, our voyage with Mopey Dick. Um, thanks to our good friends, Karen and Bob, we have been coming to Nantucket for many, many years. Um, not long after our first visit, we had sand in our, sh our shoes, and we certainly had fallen in love with the culture and the amazing crafts of this island. And being collectors uh, ourselves, we dug right in. Our Mopey Dick voyage starts around 2005 and 2006. We had learned about the whaling history of the island and Nantucket baskets, scrimshaw, and the connection to literature. The history of Nantucket and Mopey Dick will forever be woven together. In that way, Mopey Dick is just as uniquely an American story as Nantucket's baskets are uniquely an American craft. Kathy took the summer project of rereading Mopey Dick. I still owe my high school English teacher the book report, so I just read the cliff notes again. <laughs> um, so we talked about the book, we talked about the historic richness of this classic, and an idea sprung up. Why not combine our favorite Nantucket crafts and the history of Mopey Dick by doing some kind of storyboard from the book? But the question for us was, what medium to use? The original idea was that we would pick certain scenes from the book and that we would have someone do a pan bone and scrim those scenes on the pan bone. So we approached a couple of artists on the island about the idea, and then the reality of scale hit us, and we figured, well, maybe we should downsize that idea to a tooth. We thought about putting just portraits of the different characters from Mopey Dick, we thought about just doing one ship and one piece. So there were a lot of different ideas that we had swirling around, but we really didn't know the exact medium that we wanted to use. Well, we decided to do some more research and reading. We went to New Bedford to the Siemens Bethel and that other whaling museum. Um, and after purchasing several copies of Mopey Dick, and we were even more convinced that this is a great idea, and we had to do this as a collaborative effort. When we came across a copy, uh, let me see if I can get this right. When we came across a copy of Mopey Dick illustrated by Rockwell Kent, it all came together. Bingo. The full concept of the project really struck us. But a little bit about the book and a, and a couple of coincidences. The whaling ship Essex set sail from Nantucket the same year Herman Melville was born. Herman Melville was born on August 1st, and the Essex set sail on August 12th. Now, I kind of believe that some of the whalemen and sailors that were aboard the ill-fated Essex, Essex, their spirit certainly came to Herman Melville and helped him maybe psychically develop this whole concept of the book and whaling. In 1841, Melville set sail on his first whaling adventure 
aboard the whaling ship Akushnik. Ten years later, in 1851, Moby Dick was published. It was during that first and subsequent voyages that Melville learned about life aboard a whaling ship, foreign cultures, the whaling industry itself, as well as the hunt and the spirit and around the hunt for sperm whales. In the book, the exacting, gruesome details of the harpooning and cutting in and the processing of the whale are just too vivid for someone who had only experienced this secondhand and had been told a story. He had taken part in all of the activities in the book. He painted the picture with his words, real, raw, and there are so many th themes in Mopey Dick that you can follow those threads throughout the whole book. That is for someone much better and much well, more well-versed than I in, the, in Mopey Dick. Just as a note, at the time Mopey Dick was published, it was panned. People didn't think of it as a great piece of literature. From eight, it took from 1851 to 1920 for people to recognize the classic, recognize it as the classic it is now. Herman Melville spent most of his life in New York City. He worked on the west side of Manhattan as a customs agent in the area we would now call uh, the, the meatpacking district and in the 20s. And much of his time there was spent dealing with all of the people, the sailors and the workmen that he had come to know, not physically, but about their lives on the sea. Back to the project. So what happened next in, during the summer of 2006 was that we decided the best way to completely encompass the historical connection to Nantucket by doing a large Nantucket basket. It was like the three bears, pan bone too big, tooth too small, basket just right. It would hold the same idea of scenes from the book, portraits of characters, and allow us a medium to express our shared love of Nantucket crafts, basket weaving, scrim, carving, and island experiences. This was going to be an important project. And to us, we needed to find someone to truly collaborate with and would be as excited as we were about the project. We spent the summer of 2006 meeting with several basket makers, not necessarily discussing the project with each one of them, but just getting to know them, getting to know their styles and their personalities. We've wanted to make sure we found the right connection. We had heard about Mike Kane, and we had seen his work. We visited his shop and met him and Mar Marsha. Something just clicked. We talked for some time about what we had in mind, and all seemed interested. We never, Kathy and I never make a big decision without discussing it over dinner. So that night, Kathy and I had dinner in Queequeg's. <laughs> we agreed there that Mike was definitely the best person to do a project of this magnitude. When we came back to the island, we spoke to Mike, Marsha, and Dorothy again. And we talked about how are we going to start this project? What do we need to do? But the key thing about it was that everyone was very excited. 
this was, I, I certainly felt, and Kathy and, uh, felt also, that we had found a connection and that the excitement was going to be something that would bring an even more vibrant project to life. We ended the day with a trip to the Antheneum. Well, Marsha and Dorothy wanted to go to the library to get copies of Mopey Dick so they could go through it again, so they could reread, so they could get more familiar or refamiliarize themselves with the book. And most importantly, think about how the hell are we going to do this? I'd like to take a moment. Um, not, uh, well, I'll come back. I'd like to take a moment to recognize Dorothy O'Hara, the Scrimshanda. Her work is magnificent. You see it in many of the pieces here in the museum today. Not only did she do a great job and it was great for us to get to know her, but she also shared with us something that really kind of touched us. Her grandfather was a whaleman. And that was something that she put into this project. And I think she knew so much more from that experience and that heritage that she put it through and channeled so much into the project. So over the next few months, there are a lot of conversations about the project. One of the rewarding things about the experience was the feeling that Mike and company were just as excited about this as we were, and that all were working together collaboratively. Over the winter, we shared ideas and examples of what scenes we wanted, how we wanted the basket to look, how the basket needed to tell the whole story, not just a couple of vignettes. That the basket needed to incorporate the elements of whaling that were part of Nantucket history was a key thing that everybody agreed on. But the real creative process was how to incorporate the story into the basket, what to tell and how to tell it. It wasn't just about the excellent weaving of the basket, it was about weaving the story of Mopey Dick into the basket. At one point, we realized that it would probably take a while to get the basket done. And that it wouldn't be, this was the fall of 2006, and that the basket probably wouldn't be ready until 2007. Duh. Um, well, it made it even more special because 2007 was our 25th wedding anniversary. And it was special because we had shared so much of Nantucket and its crafts during our marriage at that point. And that would be a great way to celebrate and remember that time in our life. One very, one other very important thing we learned when it comes to doing a project like this. When you have given voice and form to your ideas, you just need to step away and let the artist take the till. From then on, the conversations with Mike and Marsha were more like, I'm going to use Purple Heart for the base and the handles. Yeah, the skirt needs to be at least an inch and a half wide to do the scrimshaw and the detail. The handles will be plain Purple Heart. The handles will have an ivory overlay. No scrim, though. No, the latch can't be a tooth. No, I won't put any carved teeth on the side of the hinges. No, 
I don't agree with you. The latch can't be a harpoon. <laughs> we need to talk about the top, the inside, as well as the outside. Yeah, that might work. I can do that. Yes, these conversations were a little one-sided. <laughs> it was more, uh, it was more, this is what you need and this is how I'm going to do it. But we learned to say yes, let go of the wheel, and respect the artistic insight of the people that were working to create this piece. The key crafts expressed in this project all <coughs> tie back to Nantucket as much as the story of Mopey Dick and Whaling are tied to the island. Basket weaving, scrimshaw, ivory carving, woodwork, all come together to tell the story of Mopey Dick. First, let's look at the weave. Mike is well known for his excellence of his microweave, but this is exceptional. If you look, and this picture does not do it justice, and please at some time come up and, and, and take a look at the basket. No touching. <laughs> For anyone that's tried their hand at basket weaving, you know what it takes to get the tightness and symmetry executed here. I'm sure there were many, many hours of weaving and lots of eye strain for Marsha and Mike. I'm also sure that were, there were several creative strings of expletives expressed during the weaving. And look at the rim. Just for a minute, take a look at the symmetry and balance between the wrapping on the top and the wrapping on the bottom. Also, the use of the putty to cover the nails is something that I think Mike would say he learned from one of the greater and great uh, historical basket weavers we see, Gibbs. The wood base and the handles are purple hot. It's soft color and ha it has a soft color and a fine satin finish that contrasts with the strength and durability of the, this wood and the strength that it's known for. We could have gone with something else like rosewood, oak, but this was a special basket and needed to have wood that expressed that. It wasn't just any basket. When you have a chance, I'll turn it over and you can see the fine woodworking of the scalloping on the base of the basket. These are embellishments that only true artists bring to a design like this. The ivory carvings Mike did were very special. The latch is a polished and carved piece of whale tooth. The ca it, it catches your attention right away just like the sight of Mopey Dick from the crow's nest in the book. The effect of the fins not only provides balance and symmetry, but it also allows you to have a place to grip and rest your hand as you open the latch. I know Mike spent a long time, many, many hours, trying to figure out how he was going to do this, how it was going to attach, how heavy it was going to be, how to make sure that it didn't slam down on the basket and the latch. 
when you open the latch, there's another little great surprise. The split harpoon that is on each side of the latch is something that is just a creative insight that you're not going to find. Okay, it provides balance. It also has a function because when you close the, the whale tooth latch, it buffers so that you don't hit up against the skirt, so that you don't go in too deep and uh, you're not able to slam it so you don't have something that has a potential to break. Now, the knobs of the handle are adorned with these teeny, tiny, just carved, scrimshawed whale's teeth. This is an example of the type of artistic collaboration that raises this, the bar on a project. Think about how Dorothy felt when Mike told her that there needed to be whaling ships scrimmed on those tiny teeth. Lastly, the ivory overlay on the handles and the scrim work depicting the harpoons and the cutting tools is an example of balance and symmetry, again, that is amazing to me. And it brings images from the story and the piece itself that is balanced and symmetrical is in opposition to the ships and the whaling experience, which is something that is never balanced that is never simple. It is the rolling of the waves. And yet this basket has the symmetry and the balance throughout that is juxtaposed by the story it's telling. When the handle is upright, when the handles are upright, the carved tooth latch lets you know immediately that there be whales here, Captain, which is kind of a line from the book. So um, let's go to the, to the skirt. Dorothy Scrim. The story along the rim is told in blues, gold, browns, and yellows. The detail of the street cobblestones and bricks in the opening scene at the Spouter Inn is truly amazing. It also is a testament to the skill that Dorothy brought to the project. Mm -hmm. I'll keep it here. Um, the picking the yojo, that's the little black man um, statue right there, and the tomahawk pipe is interesting because, in part, it is part of Ishmael's first encounter with Queequeg at the Spouter Inn. In the book, they share this spirituality as Quique shows Ishmael the statue and the pipe, and they do uh, and they do a, a little ceremony in front of the two of them. In a way, it's offset the next day and balance the next day when Quique goes to the Seaman's Bethel in New Bedford and participates in the religious ceremony there. 
I, I can tell you, most people, if you mention the word, the Ojo, unless they, they're not going to know what you're talking about. And honestly, it's something that flashes by in the book. And the fact that Dorothy chose to bring those two pieces on and make that part of the, the skirt was really amazing. This is one of, one of the pieces. This is uh, a map. Um, this is a, a map uh, on the back of the basket that shows the voyage. And let me see. The map is interesting because you see us taking, uh, leaving uh, what would be um, on New Bedford, Nantucket, the area coming down, and the balance, again, of the whales on each side. But it's the words that I think um, we should take a moment to, to read. It's not down on any map. True places never are. What does that mean? Does anybody, there are, the, this is one of the lines in, in Mopey Dick that you come across and you read it here and you go, well, what, 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 what does it conjure up in your mind? There have been papers written about these lines from this book. There are probably master's thesis in, in, uh, done hundreds of pages, but this line just stuck out. It was something that we just thought was really interesting to pull out of the book. The sextant and the gold coin. This is important because when Ahab nails the coin to the mast, I think it's the first time we hear someone say Mopey Dick in the book. This is where he tells the crew, the first person who cites Mopey Dick gets that gold coin. It's about an, uh, uh, in the book they say it's about an ounce of gold. But he, Ahab changes his mind later. Um, the citing, the description of the citing in the book is one of my favorite pieces because it just, the, the, the previous scene, they're talking about calm waters and they're all looking for Mopey Dick. And when it is, when Mopey Dick is cited, the description and energy that Melville uses to describe it is like a fire trail. Everybody getting up and running and going and getting in place and manning the boat. So. This scene, or the, as, as Dorothy depicted it, and don't forget the peg leg, don't forget the little peg leg, um, is a very important scene in the book. The stoving of the Pequot. This is the scene. This is the end of the voyage. This is the end of the hunt. This is the end of Ahab's revenge that he sought throughout the book, except for one thing, the whale wins. And this, the, the energy <laughs> and, uh, depicted here in the splitting of the ship and you can see people getting thrown off the mast and there is, is uh, Moby Dick's tail and I, F F Fidella? Fidella, I think is, is lashed or that could be Ahab being pulled off the boat at the end. I think it's Ahab. Um, it, it's really, it, it's really fabulous. Uh, 
And now we come to the inside. Um, did I skip one? No. Um, just let me go back to this for a minute. Um, the top of the basket. Did I lose a photo? Ah, okay. The carving of Mopey Dick. Uh, from the top of the basket, we f for the top of the basket, we wanted something dramatic. Okay. The whaling boats, Mopey Dick, the terror of the hunt, and most of all, the line, call me Ishmael. Those words open Mo the book Mopey Dick, and those words here are seen as you open the basket. The Mopey Dick carving in relief coming out of the water rather than just scrimmed was something that Kathy wanted and Mike executed perfectly. The composition of the scene in Scrimshaw by, by Dorothy is kinetic, it has motion, and it has depth. The splashes of ocean green and the orange sunset in the horizon draws your eye into the frame. And there in the sky, watching it all is, we have some differing opinions <laughs> on who that might be. Is it Ishmael? Is it Ahab? I don't know. I asked Marsha. <laughs> I, I, I didn't. You know, I don't remember either. I'll have to look in the notes, though. I bet you I was written in the notes. So, She's not here to ask. Right. Maybe it's her. Yeah. Well. I, uh, that's, uh, lastly, we're, we're inside the basket. Kathy found this poem, and it just fit perfectly for the project. I, I think everybody, do, do you want me to read it or everybody can? Okay. Oh, the rare old whale, mid storm and gale, in his ocean home will be a giant in might, where might is right, and king of the boundless sea. So, Dorothy depicting this on a scroll with the feather pen, right, feather pen, whatever it is, um, just makes so much creative sense. It's period. It's the way they would have been writing things at the time. Again, I, the work, the, the heavier brown to give the sense of age, the darkening, darkening of the scroll, to give it wear. It just wonderful, wonderful work. This is, um, again, as I mentioned, this was a tooth um, that we, this was, this is a, a was a gift for from us to us uh, for our 25th wedding anniversary. And this tooth is um, our initials, uh, Joseph Galicchio, Kathleen Galicchio, with the day we got married and the 20, our 25th anniversary uh, in 2007. Um, working on this project was an amazing voyage for us one that we will never forget, and one that we certainly try and celebrate whenever we have a chance 
to come to this museum, come to Nantucket and be part of the whole island culture and experience. And finally, here's the day we picked up Mopey Dick. That's Dorothy and Mike and Marsha. Um, and it's a treasure. It's a great work of art. The work of Mike, Marsha, and Dorothy is well beyond my attempts to adequately capture with words. Mopey Dick, as, as, as Andrea said, Mopey Dick has spent several summers at the museum. And Kathy and I certainly want to thank everyone, uh, Andrea and the staff here at the museum, for giving us the opportunity to share Mopey Dick and its story with you. And thank you all for coming. Happy birthday, Herman Melville. Um, I, I, if, if folks have any questions that Kathy, I, or maybe Marsha can answer, certainly uh, shout them out. Um, so figure from start, to from start to finish. From start to finish. By the time you gave me the idea. Oh, it, it, it was a year. A year? A year. What? I mean, we came, um, we came in the end of September 06. And we picked it up, as you can see, on uh, November of 2007. There was, um, but they, you know, there were, you know, there were uh, road trips to to the Anthenaeum. There were discussions. There were um, visits to the shop. Um, there were several conversations about how things were going. So it, it was something that, even though you know we weren't, even though we weren't seeing the basket and the progress, we certainly were in touch and were able to know what was going on and answer any questions or answer, uh, you know, whatever the topic happened to be. Um, so it, it, again, it, it, was a, it was a great experience. It was something that Kathy and I um, had not never done before, like com commissioning a piece like this to uh, have done was certainly something that uh, we, you know, never thought about doing, but there were just the sequence of events. The meeting Mike and Marsha and talking through this and rereading Mopey Dick and, you know, Kathy uh, and I sitting there discussing and going through the book and, and the different uh, copies. We have several copies of Mopey Dick. We have a children's version. We have this. I mean, so there, there were a lot of, there was a lot of source material that we had that we could reference. Uh, so it was, um, it, it, it was quite a voyage. And, uh, you know, I hope you enjoy it. Please. I remember Dorothy had the book that was a tape. Essex tape, she would have that running while she was working on yeah. it, too. And we had to be creative because we didn't want her doing a screenshot on the basket. So Michael made a mold for her to work on. Well, a lot of explosives you know, <laughs> during that time frame, but so that it was attached to something so it wouldn't take a chance on it cracking. Um, and then he had to put it on the basket afterwards. So that was a very stressful time. Well, um, how did you see a progress of what Dorothy was doing, or it was it? Just all the sudden, just I, there were a couple of times we we saw things, but but um, I think we didn't see the top until the day we picked it up. Wow. Okay. Um, we, and if I remember correctly, there was the the, the skirt. 
And I remember the discussion around the handles, because originally the handles were going to be plain wood. Then they were just going to be ivory up the side. And then, well, I'm going to, uh, then we're going to do the whole handle because you need the whole handle in ivory. And then, what are you crazy? I'm not going to put anything on the, on the, on the latches. But um, I think this being the crowning piece that it is was something that, because Kathy and Mike had talked uh, for a long time about the top and about how um, Mopey Dick was going to be portrayed. And Kathy had talked to Mike about, well, I, I'd like to see it coming out of the water. And, and, and then we're talking about the scrimshaw and how to fit this in and how to get this piece in relief without, and I don't know how these things are done, um, without destroying the rest of the scrimshaw that was being done. So, you, you, and I don't know, do you put it on first and the, do you do the carving and thus outline it so that Dorothy stays around the the outside of it? Well, what about this, the, the water? And so this was the, the last thing. And I, as Marsha will attest, the day we picked it up, See that magnifying glass? <laughs> Let me tell you, I spent a good hour to an hour and a half with that magnifying glass going around, checking the weaves, and Mike had got a case. I've never seen anybody do that before. <laughs> You know, so yep, I, I, you know, I, I, I will admit I was a little anal about it, and uh, and just just think for just for a minute, look at the way the scalloping on the skirt waves, and really, and I'm gonna do this and try not to break it. And the scalloping repeated on the bottom, on the base. I mean, like I said, there comes a point when you've you've given your idea, you've you've you know, Kathy and I are not shy people. You no, know, we Kind of, you know, this is what we want. This is what we're thinking. This is, you know, this is how it should all fit together. And there comes a time when you step back and you say, okay, artist, go do it. And, you know, the, the, way, the way the tooth attaches to the basket, the hinge in the tooth. It can't be loose so that it drops. It has to be a tight. But it can't be too tight so that you're pulling on the, on the tooth to open it because you, that's, that's not a good thing. So there it is. It's balanced. It sits and no matter what, you won't slam against the basket itself. You have the harpoons there. So something used to kill is being used to protect. So. I think today, if it was done back then, we didn't use the cell phones so much. But I think today, if it was some, a project like that was done, there would have been a lot more pictures sent and that kind of thing because of the phones. But yeah. Um, I remember there were a lot of conversations on the phone about the different things that Dorothy wanted to do next and that kind of thing. But they, no, they never and there saw was some, it. there were photos too. There you were some periodic. Yeah, yeah. 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 But not like it would be nowadays. You just uh, have to pick up your phone and pass it on. So yeah. 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 So some of the. Yes, ma'am. Who made the final selection of which scenes you were, were depicting? It, I, I would say it was more of a menu, like we, we had certain ones that we, we certainly 
a grade would be there. Like I said in, in the presentation, we wanted it to tell the whole story. So from the spouters in to Ishmael floating on the coffin at the end. And, you know, that those two pieces, those two uh, scenes were things that we we all agreed on. And then there were a couple of things that we talked about that it was more here are 10 things we'd really like. If you can fit all 10, that's great. <clears throat> but, you know, let us know which ones you're going to pick. The the globe that that wasn't something no, we was Mike actually, I think, and Dorothy, if I if I recollect, Mike did the math of yeah. the whole journey and, and was that's going there. And it, ooh, I think that's fabulous. That that's not I I don't have anything close to that level of autistic insight. Okay, so that would be the kind of thing, you know. Hey, I was happy we got Nantucket. <laughs> okay, we got Ishmael. You know, um, and I, I, you know, I think the first. You know, the first time you walk, like I said, you walk in, we walked into the shop and, and, and the, I think Marsha took this out and put it on the table. Just, you know, you, you walk up to it and it's a breaching whale. Oh, that's the top of the whale. And it just draws your eye and your attention. It's, it, it focuses you into the frame. And then you start, like, the, um, the harpoons on the front, it's the same on each side. But on the back, it's the cutting tools, the block and the cutting tools, but it's the same on each side. Um, what are the, you know, I, you can, you know, the sighting, uh, the storm, um, Ahab, these are all scenes from, from the book, and we had taken, well, we had sent, uh, gotten Xerox, um, for those of you who know what a Xerox is, um, okay, um, we had gotten Xerox copies from the, from the different, remember, we have several multi books, um, that have, you know, illustrations in them and the Rockwell Kent was like wow okay this is another level so um, we were we shared all of those and and again it, it's the kind of thing that you know if you have confidence in the people that are doing the project from the autistic level you gotta just say okay go for it we just learned to say yes yes we learned to say yes <laughs> Yeah, it's easier that way, um, and uh, you know, you know, those kinds of things. But again, you, you can you you can just the 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 text, tech, tactile tactile nature of the weave that is so tight. It it's amazing. It's great. <laughs> what can I say? Any other questions? Thank you all. Uh, enjoy the rest of your time on the island. So, and, and for those of you who uh, choose to, please uh, think seriously about making a donation to the uh, Basket Museum. Um, the organization is a, is, is a great undiscovered treasure here in in Nantucket and your contributions will be well appreciated and certainly um, our, our things uh, will bring more lectures like this and more opportunities uh, to have uh, exhibits like this in the future. So please make a donation and we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.